championships here in Grants. This is our sixth match of the afternoon. Time to meet our players. Introducing to you first from Hungary and a member of the Hungarian World Cup team. Will you please welcome Tamás Alexi! And now, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome a PDC Challenge Tour winner from Ireland. It's the Whistler, Jason Callum! Scott Taylor, the latest man through to the second round of the Austrian Darts Open. It's down to either Jason Cullen or Tamas Alexitz to join him in round two. Jason Cullen, now this is a Euro Tour debut for him, but we will see him at the Dutch Darts Masters in Zwolle coming up. Uh, Tamas, well, Euro Tour debut for him. It's only the second time he's tried qualifying for one of these European tours. And... From Hungary, we have seen players from Hungary have little bits of success on the Euro Tour. Not loads, but look who we beat in qualifying to get here. Nandor Bezeg, cheeky Nandor, World Cup stalwart for Hungary. Palja Kelly, the blade, another veteran Hungarian player. And then Christoph Ratajski, the world master. He's had to beat a BDO major champion just to make it to round one here in Graz and he takes on Jason Collins. Tamas to throw first, game on. Ron Malarkey in the commentary box for me, Dan Dawson, for Alexis versus Cullen. And he's done all that, Dan, whilst holding down the day job. Which, which is? Which is... Oh, finish. Yeah? He works as a, a demonstrator and salesman, slash salesman, in a kitchen's showroom. Well, there you go. <laughs> and the other thing I know about him, which has had a bit of the gloss taken off it, given it's on the back of his shirt, he plays for the Aramis Darts Club. Ah. Which is emblazoned in gold letters, and there's the logo on the chest pocket as well. I see. Very nicely turned down as he is. No doubts about where Cullen is from, given his green, white and gold. Could be the Ivory Coast, I suppose, but <laughs> it is Ennis Corthy in County Wexford, to be precise. He doesn't work in a kitchen showroom. Are you going to say about every player in action today whether or not they work in a kitchen showroom? Well, why not? I was going to say that. Actually, Dan, there is one other player. <laughs> yeah. Can you name him? But no, he's the only one as far as I'm aware. But as you say, Dan, seriously, uh, Alexis put in a really good string of results and um, it all makes very interesting build-up towards the Hungarian World Cup bid, which, of course, features Alexis. He'll be partnering Nandor Bezek at the World Cup in Germany in May. 96. Jason Cullen, the whistler, and just in case you're in any doubt, they've got a massive clip-art whistle on his shirt, just as a little clue there. Mm. 60. Jason Yeguar, 148. Well, on. it's on, definitely on. It's not now, but uh, with Alex, it's on 193. Cullen will return, looking for a very early break of throw here. Yeah, the first Hungarian to play Euro Tour was a guy called Janos Vargsha, who mm. beat Barney to qualify. Double 16. Thirty-two. 
chance. But it's a slim one for Alexis. Too slim. 95. Jason, you require 16. Well, he can't really afford to make uh, too many more mistakes on his doubles here. Double eight, though, for Cullen for the opening leg, and it would be a break of throw, and he's not there yet. Might be a 21 bar break, and it is Jason for Jason Cullen. Jason a man who beat Cameron Menzies 5 4 in the final of the fourth Challenge Tour event of this year. That was at the end of January. Menzies in action later against his roommate this weekend, Adam Hunt. That's in the fourth match of the evening session. 58. Yeah, curious one that, isn't it, that Cullen went on and won that Challenge Tour. They do two a day on a Saturday and Sunday for these Challenge Tour weekends. 81. He hadn't picked up a single pound in the first three events. And then by the time it came to Sunday evening, he had two grand in his hand. Yeah, and he's also picked up another grand Whoa. this year by topping up the field at eight players' championship events so far. Yeah, and he wouldn't have got in those were it not for that run to the final and the victory on the challenge tour you might have seen jason actually before because yeah he did play bdo stuff 140 um, and played a lot of you know played the world masters but early round exit things like that but he did win uh, make the final of the tom kirby which is that tournament they hold at the grand prix in city west in dublin that's the, the world championship qualifier essentially willie o'connor beat him in the final Played really well, actually, Willie O'Connor in that final, and then disappeared. Off, didn't even hang around for the final, the final of the Grand Prix, because he had to go to work early doors the next morning. Not in a kitchen showroom. Not in a kitchen showroom. Perfect setup shot. Tamas on top after 12 darts. Colin to steal it away. Oh yes, 18s. 85. Well, that was a chance for Cullen there, but by the same token, Alexis here looking at tops. That was a long way north of the wire. That's much closer, but he's not there yet. That's going to do the job, though. And the Hungarian fans in the crowd, we met one of them at the start of the day today, summoned onto the stage as part of the pre-match or pre-afternoon session entertainment. One of the fans dragged up on stage to do the walk on. 81. Whose walk-on did he pick to do? Well, it was curious because he said his favourite player was Phil Taylor. Mm. And then Russ Bray came on stage, announced it as Peter Wright, <laughs> for some reason. Seriously? And then we ended up having the Phil Taylor music. There was a bit of a laugh and a joke about it. It all went down well. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's not alone. There's a few of them that have travelled over Nine. the border. A few Hungarian cars parked outside as well. So there's a significant number of people, well, a significant number of people here full stop, but Hungarians as well. Of course. Here end of my monologue about Hungary today. I, I liked it. And it, it must be a bit frustrating for some of the Hungarian players. I mentioned Janos Varcha being the first to qualify for the Euro Tour. Was that only last year, that as well? Yeah, it was, yeah. Because yeah. um, it was the one event that Christoph Ratajski didn't manage to come through in that Eastern European qualifier. And by the side, just quickly as well, Alexis was the only non-Polish winner of that first batch of Euro qualifiers for this year as well. So yeah, beca well because Christoph has been had been oh, dominating that Eastern European qualifier, they got their own qualifying event, and then it was just reti the Christoph Ratajski qualifier. So nobody was getting a look in all the way through last year. It's been a little bit more spread around mm. this year, oh, so. and I don't think we've seen Ratajski playing anywhere near the level that he was playing last year on the Euro Tour. Having said that, he won a UK wow, Open qualifier to start. Strange old game. It would be difficult to, well, it'd be difficult for Ratajski to maintain that sort of domination, wouldn't it, over the course of two years, let alone let alone one. I mean, he did phenomenally well That's last year wild. in Europe qualifying and in Europe itself. Yeah, uh, but I just don't think we've seen him throwing at that 98 average that he always seems to produce. It's not enough anyway. Just that one magical day in Wigan earlier on this year. For a third break of throw, double ten. Double five. On the, third leg. the Whistler Jason edges in front once more. Well, look at Jason to throw first. Game on. Mervyn King, the number 11 seed, awaits the winner of this one. 
97. And we've got the Nordic and Baltic qualifier coming up next as well. Big D, Darius Labanowskis from Lithuania. 96. Up against Richie Ephaus in our penultimate match of the afternoon session. Looking forward to seeing Darius Labanowskis. He's done good things on the BDO circuit. Yeah, we mentioned it with Paul Nicholson in the previous game about how he's top of the Scandinavian rankings. And they don't give that position away for free with the quality of players they've got there. So, 58. I'm expecting, expecting a pretty good game there. It could be one of the games of the afternoon session. Yeah. Although I was fully expecting the Henderson-Barnard game to produce a cracker and in the end it was just yes. Michael Barnard who just coasted towards the victory yeah, it's strange I mean we highlighted before the game started that Barnard was in great form had that success on the challenge tour as well and you know I expected a bit more from John Henderson this uh, this morning or sorry earlier this afternoon 124 100 100 to leave 165, not thinking there, the Hungarian. Bogey number 165, no pressure at all on this. Yeah, on the fourth leg, the 14 data. Yeah, what would you put that down to? Just, just, I mean, just, it's a very different environment for him, European Tour debut, just a moment of a well, lapse of concentration. Well, look, I mean, yeah, the most successful player of all time, 100. Phil Taylor, used to hit ton 40s to leave 166 and 165 all the time. Now, sometimes... 100 and 180 number two for Colin. Sometimes Taylor would then retroactively say, oh yeah, well I was just trying to send a message out to my opponent, hit a 180 and show him I didn't need to think about counting because I was just too good. And the amount of times he did hit a, a 180 to, to leave... 126 or 125 was astonishing but he just wasn't doing his maths that's what it was but Taylor's got this I mean he's, he's one of the best counters or he was one of the best counters in the game I mean look yeah he, he could count it's just that sometimes he just didn't it's, it's, being, it's being aware you can get swept up in a game in a leg and you, you speak to somebody like Stephen Bunting say Bunting will start thinking about what shots he's going what routes he's going as soon as he gets past 400 just because he needs to be aware. He doesn't want to be in a position. I mean, sometimes even Bunting gets it. But he is thinking about it from very early on in the leg. Just because you've got to give yourself as many opportunities as possible. And that is a superb leg of darts from Jason Cullen. 11 darts And Tamas sat on 95 after four yeah. because he's done nothing wrong. And if Alexis was in any doubt that he, you know, he couldn't afford to give any opportunities away today, he's certainly brutally aware of that now because he's very quickly found himself 4-1 down here. Cullen has the throw for a 5-1 lead as well. And he also needs to capitalise on sluggish starts like that from Cullen as well. 80 on the board, 140 there. 140! Alexis to get himself going in this sixth leg. Well, Cullen averaging just over 94. And you can see he's just outscored. 96. Alexis right the way through this game. Couple of 180s. Still waiting for a first maximum for Alexis but look I mean, with very very early days Alexis is official earnings from darts coming into this tournament 20 euro 20 euro yeah 20 euro he probably gets more commission on a fitted kitchen I hope so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well I don't know what a Hungarian kitchen looks like but I assume that it would be more than 20 quid commission I've got to say I did take a peek at this um, the website of this company I mean, are you there. in the market for a kitchen not right now but you know it, well, if I lived in Hungary then I would be but oh, um, okay. No, no immediate plans sure to. Malarkey holiday home extends to. No, no, no. 100. I've no immediate plans to. Move over here or to Hungary or Austria for that matter. Uh, more on 46. from Malarkey's life plans later. But right now, Jason Cullen looking 111 for a 5 1 lead. Now looking at 92. Now looking at double 16. 95. Well, Amateur Let's check out of the day so far. 41 in this one. That would have blown that one out of the water. Finds the treble 17 to leave the ball. 96. Wrong side of the wire. And his fourth dart at double in this match, Alexis, because he has been outscored by Cullen. Other side, Jason. 
No score. That was the other side, but it wasn't quite in the red bit. Well, Alexis himself might be looking at double eight in a moment. He's just found the nine, by the way. Normal straight no. into the 12. And he has gone the wrong side there by a long way. Busting his score. And that is, well, pretty unforgivable at this stage of the match. And sure enough, Cullen has jumped all over that. Takes out double eight. 5-1. Another lesson learned there for the young Hungarian. Tamás Alexis, 5-1 down. Highest average of the day so far. Just going back to the averages. Highest average of the day so far after six and a bit 42. matches. I'm oh, sorry, five and a bit matches. Brendan Dolan, 92.88. Ron the bomb was way above that for a time, but it dipped at the end of that one. 100. Well, I think Cullen is in line to beat that. It's going to be very, very close, you would imagine. We'll see if he can finish with a flourish 83. here. Yeah, five from 17 on his doubles. Had he just sharpened up on that? Aspects of his game, I think he would be safely on course for a 58 top average of the day so far. As it is, he won't really care too much about that. 80 two European tour debutants here, both with the same objective at the start of the day to come through, win the match, and move on. And it's Cullen doing the better job of it at the moment. Yeah, shake of the head there from Alexis once again. 81. Yeah, he's lost the darts. Cullen, finishing line in sight here for the Irishman. Not the only Irishman we've seen this afternoon. Steve Lennon will round off the afternoon session against Roxy James Rodriguez, looking to break the hearts of this Austrian crowd. Very healthy crowd for the Friday afternoon session, gotta say. 87. Has Roxy James got a, a baby, by the way? I believe he does, yes. Yeah, and there's another Rodriguez in the building. Uh, Even though some of them... with RJ as the initials. Well, I would hope so. I really do hope so. But two away in the Philippines at the moment, but there is another Rodriguez here. A, a, off the conveyor belt of the Rodriguez production line here. You're never more than eight feet away from an RJ rod when you're in Austria. That's uh, just a statistical yeah. fact. Scientists have proven this. No chance for Alexis to take out the 1 2 8, but there's a chance for Cullen to make it a 6 1 winner, third in a row this afternoon. Double five will do it. Game shot, man the match. Jason Cullen safely through to round two on his Euro Tour debut. The Irishman will take on Mervyn King for a spot in the last 16 tomorrow. We have a couple of more games this afternoon at the Austrian Darts Open. Steve Lennon will look to join his compatriot Jason Cullen in round two when he takes on Roxy James Rodriguez in the final game of the session. But coming up now, it's Madhouse, Richie Edhouse against the man who is dominating the Scandinavian tour right now, Darius Labanowskis.